everybody, it's Dorothy and Teresa again, and we're excited to have you here. We are having fun, and we hope you're having fun. So we want you to do things that you enjoy, that excite you, that get you fired up, and we're doing it with sharing our knowledge and working with educators throughout the country. So we want to talk to you about energizing your staff meetings and working on building that community among your staff. So one of the first things you can do is start every staff meeting with a connector. So a connector such as, have everyone get out their cell phones, you know they've got them, mm -hmm. and ask them to find a photo that makes them smile. And then once they've done that, have them stand up and find another staff member that they haven't spoken to in the past couple days or week, and ask them to explain why they chose that photo and share the photo. Those conversations will go on and on and on. I know that we've tried to schedule five minutes for that, but it ends up taking 10 minutes, but the energy in the room to start a staff meeting is so positive. It's amazing. We watched one of our friends do this with a group of people too that didn't even know each other and they bonded. So we use that all the time now with staffs and groups that we're working with and we love it. Another thing that my staff really enjoyed, and I did this in my first year as a new administrator, I modified it from what my principal had done and I'll share with you in a minute what he had done. But I had a note card and I gave a note card to every staff member in the beginning of the year and I said, write three unknown facts about yourself that are true. So there were all sorts of things on there that I couldn't believe it and we shuffled them up. And then at the following staff meetings, I would select three teachers and read those facts. So some of the facts were one teacher put, I can fit in my entire fist in my mouth. So we're like, okay, really? Another one had put on there, she was homecoming queen and people didn't know. Another one put on there that she had had a nose job and she didn't care. She wanted people to know that. So there were a lot of different things in there that happened. Some just skydiving, different things like that. So I'd read them, the staff would guess, whoever would get the three correct, then we would go to correct, if not following staff meetings, they couldn't tell each other they would get a prize and they absolutely loved it. They would beg, where is it, where is it, let's play that game because they wanted to know all those facts. And when the one was read about, I can fit an entire fist in my mouth, they said, prove it, prove it. And she did, she proved it to the entire staff by doing it and everybody was just laughing. So my principal, he used it with students and he had us all write down facts about ourselves that were appropriate that you could share. And then on the announcement, he'd have it once a month and he'd call it like Oreo Friday and he named three teachers. Somebody caught a bass that was so big and won a contest, that was one of them. And there were just different things where they had gone hiking and the students would guess in the homeroom that got the three correct, they would get an entire you know room full of Oreos. And I've seen principals do it with Pepsi, Pepsi sweepstakes and Pepsi guests. So there's some fun things that you can do to bond. The students love that and so did my staff. That's a great idea, and I think that um, one of the things we don't do is take enough time to really find out some of those unknown facts about each of our staff members. Sometimes we work right beside somebody and never know that they have a personal interest in mm -hmm. skydiving, or maybe they have backpacked um, across the Appalachian Mountains. Mm -hmm. um, so the other thing that we have um, a suggestion for you is model effective instructional practices. So we really want our teachers to transform their classrooms into more student-centered classrooms. We need to transform our staff meetings into more staff and teacher centered. So what does that really mean? Is that 10-2 rule is out the door. That means that it's no more sit and get. That we need to turn over the work. Whoever is doing the thinking and doing the talking is doing the work. So we need to have our teachers doing the interacting, doing the having the conversations and having that productive struggle. It's okay to have them struggle. It's okay to let them take control of those staff meetings. So really energize them and do um, model some of those effective practices. So one of the things that we do is we use the 321 uh, reflection, and that is name three things that you're most interested in from the staff meeting, or two questions you still have, or one thing you wanna know more about. That's a strategy that they can take right back to their classroom and use, and it's one that you're going to gain a lot of insight from. Absolutely, and Teresa and I do that when we present a lot, and we take those and we read them and we, hone in on our craft a little bit more with the feedback. So we absolutely love using those. Another thing that I would do at staff meetings too, and a lot of principals do this as well, and the staff thinks, oh, this is just a fun activity, but it's not the point of it. So I would have them line up and say, oh, line up by the years of education, you know, that you've been in education, teaching or administration or whatever they were in, and they would line up in order. Or I would say, line up from your birthdays without talking. I would do different things to get them to line up. So they thought that was, all right, this is great. This is the fun part. That wasn't what I was doing. A lot of them tend to sit by each other at staff meetings, that same group go together. So I would pair them up, up, up there. I would shuffle that deck. 
I would partner them up from the line that had just formed so that they weren't sitting by the same people each time. And of course the ones you don't want them to correct papers during your staff meeting, we have things to do. It would get away from a lot of those different things. I just didn't have opportunities for them to partner up all the time with some people to talk about where they were going tonight or whatever. We have things to do at the staff meeting, just like they have in their classroom, and we need to get working on those. So I'd shuffle the deck a little bit. So one of the things I struggled with is sometimes I get into these uh, staff meetings or I'm planning a staff meeting and all of a sudden I freeze and I can't come up with all these questions for the connectors. Mm -hmm. So what we have done is we've created a whole stack of community building cards for you. So some examples that you can find on the cards is having a reading one and having staff share what are some challenges that they're finding right now in their classroom to meeting the needs of all their students. Getting them just to have those quick conversations. They can be a standing conversation. Another card that we have in there is um, what are some professional goals that you have for yourself this year? What is something you really want to learn about? What are some challenges you're pre um, presenting to yourself to grow around? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And this deck of cards that Teresa's is talking about, there's 50 in the set and you can just download them and print them off and they're a great activity to go at your fingertips. You can use them at any staff meeting, anytime, and it gets that conversation going. So if you go to ifireup.com and go under shop or go under products, either one will get you there. So ifireup.com and you can get that 50 set of cards for $1.49. So it's very cheap to just print those off and it gives you um, an activity to use immediately. So tomorrow you could use those with your next staff meeting. Get fired up and energize your staff meetings. Get your students and your staff engaged in effective practices. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us.